In 2014, a crack toy fixer was banished from the forums for talking about repairing vintage toys. Undeterred, this man promptly set up his own YouTube channel, located in the Somerset Underground. Today, still wanted by hardcore Star Wars collectors, he survives as a maverick toy restorer. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find him, maybe Toy Ploy can help you. Welcome to Toy Ploy. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. And in today's video, I'm going to be getting these Combat Joes ready to display here in my collection. Now, I just recently got these in a trade that I did with a good friend of mine, Stephen. I send him a box of toys and he sends me a box of toys back and he has included these Combat Joe figures. Now, if you don't know what Combat Joe is, then he is the Japanese version of G.I. Joe. When the G.I. Joe was released in the US, uh, the Japanese market thought it would be a good toy to uh, sell to their audience but they wanted to make a few changes to it to make it more appealing to the Japanese market. So they took the basic G.I. Joe figures, reworked them a bit and made them into Combat Joes. Now these aren't original figures, these are reissues from the mid 80s I think. And unfortunately they suffer with a few little issues that are common of all figures of this age in that, that the rubber that holds them together has perished. So uh, one of these figures has fallen apart completely and the other one is pretty loose and floppy. So today I'm going to get these back together. As you can see I have a uniform in the middle because uh, the figure on the left which you can't see because he's still in his box uh, doesn't actually have a uniform so I'm going to be putting that German military uniform on this figure to get him looking really very nice indeed the first thing we need to do though is open up the boxes and see actually what these figures are looking like and what needs repairing I think this box on the right needs a few little repairs as well so I might do that but uh, first up let's fix the figures if we open this box we can see exactly what is up with him and what needs fixing uh, these have the same construction as the Henshin Cyborg so this slightly different to how G.I. Joes are held together. Uh, you can see there's a hook uh, that should hold the lower legs on and as you can see the uh, legs are missing currently and I've done a video on uh, fixing up the uh, hinge in sidewalks. I will show you one of those later on in this video but first up let's get all of these pieces out. So I think this is from about the mid 80s sort of 1984 something like that. Let's see what else is in there. There's a few other little bits at the bottom of the box. We've got some instructions and a few bits of clothing. So as you can see he is in pieces and what's happened is the bit of elastic that holds the legs together it goes up through these balls and in around and through the sort of pelvis and back to the other leg this has perished and we need to replace that in fact I've actually started doing it on this one because it's a fairly boring process and I know exactly what I'm doing but I will show you the rest of this fix as we go so we need to put him together you can see he comes with a few leaflets we've got this leaflet that shows the combat joe action figure series it's uh, got I'm quite a nice image there of them all sort of silhouetted and as you can see there are three different versions and on the back it shows you what comes with each figure so number one is a world war ii i'm going to say that's an american soldier there it looks like that an american soldier number two which is this chap should be the uh, german officer which is why i have the outfit behind and then the number three well, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's another sort of military uh, outfit. Could be Japanese. Not quite sure what that one is. But uh, yeah, I will have to get some translations going on there. But today we're mainly going to be fixing up number two. I think number three does need a little bit of work. But as you can see, poor number two has his legs detached. So let's get that fixed up first. So here are his legs. And as I said, it's the elastic that perishes. This is the bit of elastic that should be in there. It's got no stretch left in it at all. In fact, uh, someone had already cut, cut this off and sort of half done the, the uh, restoration process. So what I've got to do is put a new piece of elastic onto this little metal attachment here. You can actually remove this metal attachment completely and just sort of thread elastic around and uh, tie it in a knot but I like to try and do it to, by keeping these little bits of uh, metal in place. In fact you can see here I've already replaced the elastic on this side and the bit of metal is still there so I'm going to do the same process on this one. Uh, unfortunately it's actually easier to cut this bit of metal off and bend it slightly and then put it back in so the first thing I've got to do is cut it. If we look inside you can see that it's uh, sort of a loop of metal that has been held in place by this riveted bar. Uh, it's not worth taking the bar out so the easiest way to get this out is just to cut across that piece of metal, bend it slightly and then you can unhook it and then we can bend out these two bits of metal that uh, grip the piece of elastic, put a new piece of elastic in, close those bits of metal up and then hook the uh, sort of piece back on and bend it shut. So it will have a cut uh, through it but um, it still holds in place just uh, as well as it would do originally. Like So uh, let's cut this one out and then we can uh, replace the elastic. So I have a pair of uh, metal cutters here and I'm just going to carefully stick those onto the piece of metal there 
and cut and twist. It's a little bit awkward to do just because everything is in the way and it's also inside the leg. But, but as I say, this is easier to do than trying to replace the elastic with this all in place. So if I just cut this like so. Okay, so you can see I've just uh, about cut that. So I've taken a pair of uh, pliers here, just bend that slightly and then I can unhook it. And now you can see exactly what that piece is. As you can see, it's a little loop of metal and the, the pole goes through the middle of it. All I've done is cut it so that I can unhook it. And then once we're all happy, I can slot this back over and bend it back in shape. So now we can replace this uh, rotten elastic. And to do that, again, I've got another pair of pliers here and I'm just gonna bend these pieces of metal back out of the way so that we can free up the old piece of elastic. Sometimes these bits of metal have uh, Sort of not got much give in them and they do snap it, it's uh, not an issue you can see actually on this one that one side of it snaps i've just held it on with the other side it will hold good enough you know no one's going to be sort of pulling the legs on this figure so uh, you can get away with that the important thing is just to be able to get these open and if it does break completely then i will just replace this uh, without uh, using these metal clasps i'll just do it with a bit of elastic and tie it in a knot but i'd rather if i possibly can uh, get this bit of old elastic out There you go, like so. So we now have uh, the clasp without that piece of elastic. And I can take this new bit of elastic that I've already picked up and cut to length, and I can slot that in, and then we'll close that back up. Now that that's done, we can actually put these legs back together and attach them onto the figure. Uh, this uh, new bracket will actually fit through these balls. So all you've got to do is thread that through first because that is the sort of hip ball. We then go through the pelvis, so up through there and then back through the other side. Make sure that's around the right way. See, there's the bottom, there's the front, like so. We can then thread that through the other ball and then we can hook that back onto the leg. I've already actually bent this uh, flat just to make it easier to get through. So I've got to slightly open this again, just so that we can hook it onto the bar. So it needs to look like that, just slightly bent open. Then we can push this into the leg and hook it back over the bar, like so. And then with a careful bit of uh, plier work, I can close that up and it will be fine and hold these legs on really nicely. So I'm just gonna bend that back to into its sort of uh, original shape. There you go, like so, you can't see it particularly because of the elastic, but that is back in shape. So these legs now have a new piece of elastic, which is threaded through there, and we've now got to hook it onto the uh, hook inside his uh, torso. With Combat Joe, you can actually take the torso apart. There are three screws on the back, which will give you access to this hook, but you really don't need to. As you can see here, I've just used a crochet hook to uh, grab the elastic. I can now take the hook and just hook it under there and remove the crochet hook and it will ping back in place and the legs will be attached nice and firmly. So if you want to do the uh, route of taking the body apart, you can, but there really is no need. You can actually just do it with a hook and there you go. He's all back together. Outfit wise, I'm going to be using this uh, German officer's outfit, as I mentioned earlier this is again a reissue so uh, it's uh, from mid 80s i think as you can see it's uh, not ever been worn and it's all nice and uh, mint on card it comes with a little instruction manual here and shows you uh, what to do it even comes with some stickers by the looks of it so it looks like we can put some stickers on i will be putting this on the figure though because it'd be nice to have it uh, displayed it looks like it has been sewn or stapled onto the backing board so i can just undo the staples and be able to get these uh, pieces out from under the blister which means if I ever want to, I should be able to put it back on and put it back in the packet. So let's get this opened and put on the figure.
and here he is with the uniform on. Uh, the uniform's really nicely made and I have to say I do really like this figure. It looks a lot more like uh, Liam Neeson in Schindler's List. I may be wrong on when these were made. The uniform is in such good condition and the figure uh, sort of feels in such good condition that these may be reproductions from a lot later than the 80s. I just can't find out any information on them. There's no copyright information on the backs of them. So if you know then uh, do let me know. And as a sort of good comparison let me move this guy to the side slightly. I'm going to bring in my action man version of uh, the German officer. As you can see I do actually have my German officer outfit on the uh, Captain Zargon body. Uh, that's because it reminds me of the Herogen in Star Trek Voyager but uh, you get the basic idea and you can see how different they are. It's a completely sort of different style to it but um, they look really nice sort of complementing each other. But I have one more figure to open so let's open the other Combat Joe that I have and see what that looks like and see if he needs any repairs. So this is the second Combat Joe I have and this is in box number three. I'm not quite sure what this outfit is supposed to be. Uh, as I said at the start I think it's another sort of soldier maybe American. I'm not quite sure. Uh, this one the box has a little bit of uh, wear and tear to it so I might need to do a bit of repairs on that. This flap is just about holding on. If I close that up then I shouldn't have any problems with that. And then we have this uh, Combat Joe inside. He appears to have a few stickers that should go on his body. I'll have to work out where those go. But otherwise he's in very good condition actually. Really nice. Different uh, face completely. You can see the uh, face shape is very different to the other one. I'll uh, compare them in a second. And he has a more sort of camouflaged uniform on. He's even got a little jumper underneath there. So he's got a jumper on and a uh, yeah, nice sort of camouflage jacket and belt and some very sort of detailed boots as well. These are much more detailed than the, the UK version. He feels a little bit on the floppy side so I think I'm going to have to quickly restring his legs so that we can get him standing up because yeah he's not going to stand up particularly well like that. And I'll have to see if there's some information as to where these stickers go. You can see it says they're US Army so it's definitely US Army. Oh and actually maybe it is 1984 on the bottom there it does say Takara 1984 so maybe these are older than I'm thinking. They just seem in very good condition but let me give this guy a bit of a restring and then we'll compare the two together. So I've just got this second Combat Joe apart and it suffered exactly with the same issues that the other one has. Uh, the uh, elastic has completely perished. The interesting thing was though that underneath his uniform he is wearing a set of underwear. So he's got these blue pants and a sort of khaki uh, vest on. Uh, but the whole outfit was sewn onto the figure. So it's lots of little stitches using this black thread. And that was the only thing holding it together. Basically once I undid those threads the uniform came off and his legs fell off. So um, yeah it's obviously perished in the box. It's been in there a long time. So I will just uh, quickly fix this one up and then we can uh, compare the two together because the face is very different. It's a completely different sculpt on there and it's uh, quite nice to see such variety in these figures. So let me just uh, get his legs back on and uh, we can compare them because they are really nice looking figures. And here he is all back together and he's looking great. Uh, just changing the elastic means that these figures can now stand up again. When that perishes the legs go so floppy you'd have a great deal of trouble actually getting these to stand up without using some sort of 12 inch figure stand. Uh, but now look at them. They are fantastic and you can see how different their faces look. This guy has actually got a bit more of a tan going on. You can see he's got a little bit more sort of darker tones to his skin and nice blue eyes. And if we bring in the uh, German one here you can see he has completely different haircut with uh, much lighter coloured hair and a very different looking face. I think the uh, third figure that I don't have also would have had a different face. So it's nice that they've added that sort of uh, variation to them and just makes them that little bit nicer to collect and I guess when you've got different uniforms on them they all look very different indeed. And I've been having a closer look at the sort of instruction sheet I guess that came with it. Obviously I don't read Japanese but um, you can see here that uh, each figure didn't come with any accessories. You had to buy the accessories separately. These are separate packs. So the figure number two would originally come with a German soldier outfit. So I put on it the uh, German officer uniform that I was uh, given along with these two figures. And there you can see the uh, US Marine. Again he wouldn't have come with any of these uh, bits. They are accessories that you add on. It may be that he should have come with a helmet uh, because it looks like in this photo that's what he had there. Maybe that part is missing. I don't really know. As I say these are new figures to me. I've never had them before and actually finding out any information on them seems to be pretty hard work. So um, if you do know any more about these then uh, please get in touch or leave comments below in the description of this video. 
while I've got these uh, two figures out I've just made a quick repair to that box flap as well it seems sensible to do this is just a bit of a, a brown uh, gummed tape uh, I've got plenty of videos on repairing boxes for various toys so go and check those out as you can see it's still a little bit wet but once that's dry we will have a flap that is not going to fall off again so that's a good repair I'm happy with that one and there we have it that is it for this video I've managed to get these two figures back up and in a nice displayable state and they're going to look really nice standing along with my action man figures so I need to say a massive thank you to Stephen for doing this uh, trade with me we often swap packages between each other so um, this one was a really nice one thanks ever so much for uh, sending these over if you've enjoyed this video then why not check out some of my other action man and GI Joe related content make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.